my name is Eric Lands, and I am an SDK engineer with Embrace. At Embrace, we help our partners solve their most difficult production issues. Each month, I like to highlight one of those issues in a presentation, give you some background, and then help you understand how to avoid hitting that problem in your own application. This month, we have something really special to talk about. There have been a lot of Xcode upgrades in the past few quarters, and whenever that happens, partners start to hit these bit code compilation problems. So if you've ever seen errors like this in a build log and Apple rejects your App Store submission, it's almost certainly a bit code problem. You might have heard of bit code, Apple talks about it a lot, you probably heard of LLVM, but you might not know what all that really means and what it means to your application. I hope to clarify that today. Before we dive into that side of things, we need to talk about how this used to work. So when, when the iPhone was first released, the compiler we used to build our programs was called GCC, the New Compiler Collection. This is a very old Linux-based compiler for C code or Objective-C code, and, and Apple used it as the primary compiler. The key point is it's a one-step compilation process. That means you take your code, you know, C, Objective-C, whatever you have, you run it through GCC, and you get binary assembly out the other side that an iPhone can run. This is a one-step process. You upload the assembly to Apple, and then your users download and run your app. LLVM changed that. So a few years ago, Apple decided to move to the LLVM compiler, and there's a lot of good reasons for that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but let's first talk about what that means to your program. So LLVM is a two-step process. So unlike GCC that directly changes C to assembly, LLVM runs C through a Clang front end that transforms it into bit code which is this sort of intermediate representation of your source code. So this bit code means exactly the same as this. And then there's a separate program called the LLVM backend that can take the bit code and turn it into ASM. The, the reason for splitting these two apart is to sort of allow us to, to make improvements into how the bit code changes to ASM without having to retokenize the C code every single time. So there's a lot of performance improvements to move into this model. So why did Apple make this change and why does Apple push you so hard to use Bitcode in your builds? Let's talk about that. It really comes down to binary download size and what an app has to download. In the very early days of iPhone, we could only support what we called a fat binary, a fat elf binary. And that means it has a slice for every CPU type that it needs to run on. And so your iPhone app, if it was going to support you know, 32-bit and 64-bit ARM CPUs would have to include basically two copies of your code. And your users were downloading both copies of their code, even though only one copy could ever run on their phone. It was wasting a lot of this download bandwidth. So Apple moved to a sliced binary format. Now this format is fully supported by GCC. This slicing was uh, supported pre-Bitcode. But what, what the Apple can do now is on their server, they can you send them all the slices and they can serve only the slice that that device needs. So my ARM V7S device can download only seven megabytes. It doesn't have to download the full 32 megabytes. It's not even gonna understand what that code means anyway. But Bitcode lets Apple do even better. So because Bitcode is a two-step process, you upload your Bitcode to Apple. And Apple actually runs the LLVM backend for you in their server and then gives each version of the iPhone that exists a custom binary for your app that's optimized for that phone specifically. So this gets the best performance and the best download sizes. But it also lets Apple do something really interesting. If Apple decides to improve or fix a bug in the LLVM backend, they can recompile your bit code and serve a new version to your users without you uploading a new version of your code to them. This is a very powerful concept that has allowed Apple to sort of fix a bunch of bugs and, and optimize things behind the scenes. So Apple is very interested in getting bit code versions of all of your apps. But wh what's the problem with that? Why do users hit bit code problems when they build applications? Well, your application uh, what your application is built with Xcode, and Xcode is actually quite complicated. It has a UI, but it also has a set of SDKs in it. Each SDK includes a version of LLVM inside of it. As you can see here, LLVM uh, SDK 13.2 shipped with LLVM 8, 13.5 ships with LLVM 9. Now the problem is, Bitcode is, tends to be a forward-only format. What that means is that, you know, LLVM version 9 can read bit code from version 9, it can read bit code from version 8, it can read bit code from version 7, it knows all that, but it'll never be able to read bit code from version 10. 
right? 10 doesn't exist yet. How could it read that code? In the same sense, if you take a module, a framework like Embrace that was built with the 13.4 SDK, which includes LLVM 8.0.1, and you try to build it with a version of Xcode that's using LLVM 7, which is shipped with 13.2, you're going to get those compilation problems and Apple's going to reject your build. And that's because Every module in your your library has to be at the same bit code level in order to successfully compile. So the bottom line is if you're seeing those weird build errors and, and Apple's rejecting your build and you just upgraded Xcode or you just read about a new Xcode coming out, it's almost certainly gonna be some bit code incompatibility issue. And the right answer is to check your Xcode versions and make sure that you're using the latest version that Apple supports. Uh, that'll just get you the latest tools. You can still target whatever SDK you need for your app. There's no problem with that. But by using the latest tools, you ensure that the Bitcode version you make will be compatible with everything that Apple wants to link with it. Um, so I hope you found this presentation interesting. I hope it helps you uh, solve some difficult build problems next time you, you update Xcode and have a great day.